it was written in 1949 which is right after world war 2 and in the midst of the cold war when the entire world's future was in question of the grim prediction of what the world could look like in 1984 1984 is honestly one of my favorite books it's, i believe it's one of the best books i've ever read so as we mentioned the book was written by george orwell now it's extremely important to also understand what kind of life george orwell lived george orwell was a revolutionary writer and he had a life that contributed to that so jehan will be telling you a little bit about that and the reason it's still considered such a revolutionary piece of literature even today it was written almost it was written about 80 years ago the reason even today it's considered still relevant kids are taught this book is because it warns against a particular future and the fact remains we are still at risk of that future today so george orwell is basically the pen name of eric arthur blair he was born in india during the british occupation and spent his childhood in england and south east asia um so during these times he witnessed uh, colonialism and social class inequality all of these heavily influenced all of his writings and um, another important period was when he went to burma and he was in the indian imperial police force so over there he saw the suppression of the burmese and felt increasingly ashamed eventually he quit and went back to england uh, to pursue writing for full time and um, in his lifetime he also witnessed you know the spanish civil war and stalinist russia all these were totalitarian totalitarian regimes so these influences other writings like animal farm so 1984 is set in britain now uh, britain this britain is shown to be a part of a larger state called oceania so as is so now in this book it depicts a post war world in which it shows that the entire world has been ravaged by nuclear war so you are just likely to consider this was written in the cold war a time when the entire world was worried this could be a very imminent reality so he is suggesting that the world war did the nuclear war did happen and the world was ravaged by it and in that future what he is describing is that the world is divided all the countries are divided into three major states and all three of them are constantly at war with each other so now this oceania is where it's based it shows it to be a totalitarian state so like jehan mentioned a totalitarian state is where one ruling party controls every aspect of the citizens lives the citizens have no autonomy or freedom or control so now this oceania is represented by a government a government called the party this party is represented by the face of big brother so now big brother it's a man whose face appears everywhere on every poster posters on every single wall match this entire wall being covered with posters on all your coins on every kind of propaganda you see one face the face of big brother and underneath it there is one phrase called big brother is watching you and even today 80 years later whenever people talk about unethical surveillance about surveilling people against their will about any kind of that the first phrase that comes to mind is still big brother is watching us become synonymous with that so now in this the reason for this is uh, big brother is watching you in this society these citizens are monitored every single moment of the day how do they do this they have tele screens tele screen is what orwell imagines it's quite similar to what televisions would be like except it not only broadcasts it also receives so everywhere in public in your own homes in your offices in the streets there are these tele screens that can pick up on all sound and can pick up video So basically, you're being monitored when you're walking down the street. You're being monitored when you're in your house. You're being monitored while you're sleeping. That's why they are under constant surveillance. Picks up on every movement and on every sound. It could be in the forests as well, not just the city. So in this society, it's shown that the government controls, like I said, controls every aspect of people's lives and brainwashes them to dedicate themselves to this party, the government. So these people believe the party to be their savior. They are utmost devotees of the party. while at the same time this party is waging a war that never ends so the protagonist of this book is a man called winston smith he is a member of this party but he is amongst the outer ranks so he works in the ministry of truth where as the irony goes his job is to rewrite records he rewrites records in history so that he can say the party instructs him what they want history to say and it's his job to change every existing version of that record to say what the party wants them to say which means people have no idea what 
people can think of nothing aside from what the party tells them so basically the book the premise of the book is focusing on how winston is discontent with the party he's a member of the party he's a he's a citizen but he doesn't agree with their ideologies however the society is so structured that any kind of disagreement any kind of rebellious thought means not only torture it means certain death that's the premise so in this book we see that the party is trying to replace the language english by something called new speak now the fundamental aim of new speak is to reduce the amount of words that there are that there are right now this is a very interesting concept uh, i can kind of summarize it in one line if you can't if you don't have the word freedom you can't demand freedom right that's the whole premise behind uh, this new language called new speak and there's another concept called thought crime so what thought crime is basically is it that it's that it's a concept that if you even think about something it's considered to be a crime so in this book you know we see examples of people going into jail they haven't done anything they just blabbered some stuff against the party in their sleep right and the party was like look you had bad thoughts about us you had thoughts about rebellion we will put you in a camp and jail etc etc so the book follows winston as she mentioned the protagonist winston it follows winston's attempts to kind of keep his discontent hidden um and he performs very simple acts of rebellion such as writing in a diary and eventually even goes on to fall in love now we would like to end it with the summary of the book right here because we don't want to give anything away we want you guys to go and read it we want you to see what happens who he who he falls in love with you know is it a cinderella ending is it a bad ending we want you guys to be curious so now we want to speak about some stuff that we took away from this book so to me it's a cautionary tale george orwell was basically saying that you know it's an extreme imagination of what a government can do you know if uh, it comes to it the main part was the uh, importance of independent thought and free speech so uh, yeah so right now the things that jehan talked about were independent speech and mass surveillance so i'm just going to take away a few other things that i picked up on you look at the world today you look at our even our country almost all newspapers all news channels are kind of known are known to be propaganda they're known to be owned by either political parties or influential people they very much control what is said about them and they can and they have the know to wipe out all mentions of any kind of opposing uh, views of point that is still happening today so i believe that propaganda still exists very much today and it's important for all of us to recognize that uh now another theme is censorship censorship is quite commonly tied in with propaganda etc so now again all i'm trying to do right now is to try to get us to think ki apne duniya mein kaha ho raha hai apne country mein kaha ho raha hai censorship is so common so we think all of us today today the fact that we have this capacity to have this discussion is free speech but there like, there is the fact there are people out there free journalism is rare today but there are still people who are trying to do it and there are still critics and journalists who are being thrown in jail for it and it's happening in this country in october 2023 which was to give you some context 6 months ago in india the houses of 46 journalists were raided because they criticized the bjp this is still happening in our country the writing of the past was something which i read it struck me the most because it seemed ridiculous the past is all we have to go on except i looked into it and turns out world over countries have been accused of modifying their textbooks what they're teaching their children they are modifying history to say what they want to say it's happened in uh, there are some countries it's happened in israel it's happened in i believe in iran the leading parties were accused of changing the textbook when it is mentioned the atrocities of the government had uh, done but in india itself last year bjp was accused of modifying textbooks in delhi to remove mentions of islam and to remove mentions of gandhi ji's views against um against hindu nationalism this is happening in our country itself what our children are being taught is being changed facts are being changed in our country itself the reason like i said the reason i believe this book to be revolutionary is because in an isolated capacity we tend to ignore these things that are happening around us When I said the news is propaganda, half the people here nodded. When I said critics are being arrested world over, half the people here nodded. All of us know this. 
all of us know that our internet activity is being tracked and our phones are likely listening to us but we man diya duniya aisi hai kya hoga today i mention today i might mention paris and i open my phone and my phone is recommending a trip to paris and i don't think twice about it tomorrow i'm in my room and i mention that i am not liking what the government is doing right now and that time the government throws me in jail that's the difference between today them monitoring me and it not mattering to me versus tomorrow them monitoring me and controlling my life over it that's the reason we need to take attention of it it's a reminder to think for ourselves it's a reminder to take notice of what is happening in the world around us because unless we because if we don't we are the ones sacrificing our own freedom so that's my that's my take on the book i just like to finish by giving you one of my favorite quotes from the book uh one of my favorite quotes of orwell actually the further a society drifts away from truth the more it will hate those who speak it thank you okay.